My name is Joshua David Perry. My nickname is Ponce. I was born and raised in Lafayette, Louisiana. When I was little, I always wanted to be in movies, and I liked to act. Hey everyone, Brandon Hardesty here. There I am, half asleep, shuffling my way through the airport. For those of you who don't know me, I've been acting professionally in film and TV for eight years. Here are some of the projects I've done. I'm what Hollywood labels a character actor. I started a crowdfunding campaign to do a special episode about Josh the Ponce Man Perry. Although I love making these episodes, I really want to do more like this one. I do these episodes and I don't really get to know the person. I get to know them just watching their projects and interviews that they've done, just in kind of a secondhand way, but this is the first time, one of the first times I'll be able to really sit down and, I don't know, just really get to know them. Thanks to everyone who donated to the campaign, I flew to Louisiana and spent five days interviewing Josh and his whole family. An old friend of mine, Kenny Johnson, who's been making short documentaries for years on his own YouTube channel, came with me to help out. And now, thanks to our supporters, we can present to you the fruits of our efforts, supporting actor spotlights, Josh the Ponce Man Perry. I first met Josh and his brother Scott at an event called YouTube Live back in 2008. They were there because they had millions of people watching their comedy videos on YouTube. A big reason I relate to Josh is that his path in the entertainment industry really parallels with mine in a weird way. Both of us rode that initial YouTube wave that started back in 2006 when we were making videos. And as a result of our popularity, we ended up acting in roles in film and television. But Josh is unique. Nice boobies. He is a mild form of Down syndrome, which is a big reason I wanted to talk to him. Do you want to cuddle for a little while? Oh, no. Well, if you change your mind, I'm one hell of a spooner. I wanted to make an episode about Josh because not only do I relate to him as a fellow actor, but I'm curious to know what life is like as an actor with Down syndrome. And I want my scalps and some bacon. Mmm, scalps and bacon. One oh, Oh, hi. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> hey, there he is. <laughs> okay. Hey, Josh, buddy. Nice great to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice <laughs> we came. I, I like all your work. Oh, you do? I do. <laughs> Were you watching my videos? All night. All night. <laughs> I've been watching all your videos. I've been researching. I've been. Josh lives here with his parents, Al and Connie Perry, in Lafayette, Louisiana. Can I show you the, this place in the back end? There we go. Okay. A couple times a week, he cleans up at a local daycare center that's owned by his mother, Connie, and his sister, Stacy. He comes from a creative family. His mother, Connie, actually works part-time as a costume designer. His family put us up for a few days while we interviewed them. Turns out they're used to having people stay here. Their house is kind of a revolving door of friends and family, so much so that they have this wooden plaque above one of their door frames. It reads, Perry's Boarding House. They leave but keep coming back and bringing more with them. They were all so nice. They kept taking us out to dinner like every night and we'd always be meeting someone new. Big time. I have a huge big time family who I love, yes. And they support me very well, yes. All right, let's see. Where do we start? I have three children. Scott is the oldest. He lives in New Orleans. He just recently was married. Stacy is the only girl. And Josh is the baby of the family. And of course, everyone knows him as Ponce Man. Why did you decide to put him up on the wall like this? Because we never see them. So I thought, why can't I just make a wall of pictures so we can come in and really enjoy it because we can see them when we... And I, this was the best room to do it. When Josh was born, everything was seemed perfectly natural and normal until I was in the labor room. 
And when we went in there and Josh was actually born, I could tell uh, there was something that wasn't right because the doctor kept asking me these strange questions and they had taken him away almost immediately and they weren't bringing him back to me. Before they bring the baby out, the doctor comes out and tells me the child is Down syndrome. And that was a basically a new term 35, 40 years ago. 1979 when Josh was born, uh, they'd really been calling uh, Down syndrome, used to have the term of mongoloid. The, you know, the doctor described this thing, and as you can imagine, that pushed in those slanted eyes and pointed ears, like, what, what did we make here? Well, Al had this thought that it was, he was going to see a deformed child. He was so frightened inside. And we, you have to remember, we were still very young at this time. And so when he brought him in t into the room, he looked down at Josh, and all he could see was he looked like Stacy and Scott. And he was so choked up, he couldn't talk. I'm looking at the child like, this child looks like my other two children when they were born. There was no difference, no difference at all. How can you describe a child like that to a parent when that, you know, that really wasn't what it was? Uh, Down syndrome yeah. usually is a child is born or a baby's born with an extra chromosome, a complete extra chromosome. Uh, Josh is considered mild. Well, and you made the decision, you're like, even though he has Down syndrome, doesn't that, matter. Doesn't define him. Yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. Never did. The first doctor we had was a doctor here, a pediatrician. He was an older one. He didn't really keep up with the things, new happenings, evidently, because when I went to see him for the first time after we got out of the hospital, he informed me that Josh should be institutionalized. And he said, there's a nice institution right down the road you can take him to and, and, and you can go visit him every night and they'll take care of him and they'll do this and they'll train him and do this. Well, that was all he had to say. I wrapped Josh back up in his blanket and I walked out and did not go back. Um, we found another doctor who said, Down's kids are great and they can do just about everything that any other child does. And I said, that's right, he'll be the best Down syndrome kid in the world. Nobody calls me Lebowski, you got the wrong guy. I'm the dude, man. A long time ago, I used to watch movies with my mom and my father. And that's what got me interested Rocky in movies. Two. Rocky Two. Yeah, that was Rocky Two. Ah, okay. Close, though. He is like a walking encyclopedia for movies. And that has always been his love. Since Josh was little, he's been handwriting in countless amounts of spiral notebooks. I put in movies like any actors I like, like Jack Lemmon, John Travolta, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He writes down different genres of movies, movies that certain actors have been in, and most of all, they're full of movie quotes. A man's got to know his limitations. Why is Ponce called Ponce? Hmm, why is Ponce called Ponce? Ooh, very deep. Mm -hmm. Josh almost has two personalities in a way. First, there's Josh, and then the Ponce Man. I got my name from my dad, calls me his Ponce. I gained a lot of weight a long time ago. I look like Andy Melanakis a little bit. And around here we have uh, an old dish, a Cajun dish called Shodan, which is a stuffed pig stomach, and which they call it a ponce, the ponce. I think our father originally was trying to make him lose weight by calling him the ponce, like giving him a name so he would be a little self-conscious and want to lose weight, mm. but instead he loved it, and he was like, I'm the ponce man. What do you prefer to be called, Josh or ponce? Ponce. Yeah, or ponce like man. better, or ponce man. Or ponce man, yes. Or ponce man. So Scott really got Josh into acting. He did. He really did. The Ponce Man really shines the most on his YouTube channel he shares with his brother Scott. The whole channel is a variety of goofy sketches, songs, and whatever else comes to their mind. Comedy is my favorite. I like doing comedy stuff. It's kind of sketchy. I like sketchy stuff like that. Yeah. 
you know, there's some things that they do that uh, I don't particularly care for. And they know, and Josh, Scott knows that. Anything that has to do with uh, bodily fluids, I don't really care for too much. Oh, sick. Scott knew he could act and gave him the opportunity. And he's a good actor. He needs direction, but Scott can pull things out of Josh that's unbelievable. He really can. And the thing about it is Scott has an eye for this. And he, of course it's his brother, so he knows what his brother can and cannot do. Take that, bitch! <laughs> Look at all this money. We should get hookers. What was the happiest moment in your acting career? Oh, for my brother and stuff. That, that's my happiest moment, is it's my brother. Ponce man? Yep. Give him a clap. So it seemed like a big piece of the puzzle here was getting to know Josh's brother Scott. Josh, Kenny, and myself drove two hours from Lafayette and met Scott at his home in New Orleans. Ponce. I call him Ponce. Josh, the Ponce Man Perry is my little brother. Yeah, it's like 2007 or I, I actually didn't get Ponce into acting. Ponce has always wanted to be an actor. He's always wanted to act, and he's always acted. Oh, yeah. Scott was always up wanting to direct and, and act. So he moved to California. You don't love something, Mama? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 My work is the most honest work you will ever see. I left Louisiana because there's no film industry here. I came back in 2010 because there finally was a, an actual film industry here. How come you guys can't just give us a, you know, a pill? I did my first short film at the end of 2001. It was called Side Effects. It was, a, it was set in a drug study. So we needed all these other patients that were in this drug study. And it was casting and I was like, you know who I really would like is my dad and my little brother because they would be an interesting pair to have in this situation. And I gave Ponce uh, the part of the puker. It's just a quick scene. He goes by, you hear him puking off the screen. <laughs> he does all his own puking. Ever since then, he just like, he would always ask me like, he wanted to do stuff. I'm like, well, dude, you're in Lafayette. So that's why he came out to visit me uh, in 2006. He came out to visit because he really wanted to make a short film. The, the very first thing we did was the trouble with syndromes. It's still probably my favorite thing in the world because he's just absolutely hilarious. I think that also sums up my personal attitude towards stereotypes. What the hell is wrong with you? I uh, Tourette syndrome. You don't have Tourette syndrome. You Down syndrome. Oh. People, people think because you're labeled as this, you need to act this way. Yeah! Yeah! And it's just so limiting. A lot of the ideas we do, the germ of the idea came from something that Ponce either said or did or a reaction somebody had to him or me or whatever. Which I think is what makes it more funny. At this point, Josh got more of an acting bug. He was excited to be working with his brother and wanted to do something more elaborate, something longer, something different. There was a sketch comedy show on Fuel TV and I ended up pitching a couple of ideas and both of them had Ponce uh, in them and Ponce was the lead of this one called Hey Bro. <laughs> was they got greenlit and we shot four episodes. Hey Bro is pretty much a compilation of scenarios in which Josh walks in on Scott doing something ridiculous and asks him, am I that? And then he does that. For example, am I a superhero? Do I roll with the fat bitches? Am I a Jew? And then uh, the network basically ungreenlit them because they, First they said they wanted us to put a disclaimer saying that I was Ponce's brother and that Ponce knows what he's doing and that he really does have Down syndrome. It was this whole disclaimer that was gonna be in the front of all these videos. I was like, that makes absolutely no sense. Like, it's not only insulting to him, but it's insulting to, your, to the audience 
if somebody is acting and doing pages of dialogue in one take, then to, for the, if you're worried about somebody going, oh my God, he doesn't know what he's doing and he's being taken advantage of, why is that a person that you think is, is worth being an audience member? This is the biggest problem for me is I have a big disconnect with commerce and art. Probably, probably why I, I, no one's paid me a lot of money to make my own movie yet. This brings us to a word that holds a lot of weight in Josh's life. Retarded. He is a cop and he's learning impaired. He's the retarded policeman. That's me. Hello, sir. Oh. Hey. Hi, officer. Now, all these issues, does he know what he's doing? Is he being taken advantage of? The word retarded itself really came to a head when Josh starred in the web series, The Retarded Policeman. I play a retarded cop to pull people over of different actors and stuff. Yeah, I like that. The best thing about Retarded Policeman is he's an authority figure. And no matter what happens, he's kind of always in control. The best thing is that people just don't know how to react. Hello. Hi. 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 He seemed nice. Oh, as far as retarded policemen, I was actually there when we shot the first three episodes. Um, and I mean, it sounded hysterical. And we were pretty excited about the whole thing. We knew that uh, it would be a fun series to shoot, and it was. There you go, little man. Now don't forget your quotas. You know, you didn't stop any Mexicans last week. Yes, Father. And plant this on someone for me, won't you, sweetheart? Okay, Mom. I am 64 years old. I, I never even tried marijuana. So which movie do they put me in? They put me in the one where I'm giving Josh a bag of marijuana. We're proud of you, son. You're the most retarded policeman ever. Thanks. The funniest one was episode with Cosmo. Ponce pulls him over because he's black. Yeah, yeah, we have a quota, you know? You're, you're black, I'm the police, that's what happens. Please get on the ground so I can beat you. No! Come on, I'm just trying to do my job. Especially now, you see how that is a direct commentary on some very real shit. Isn't there anything we could do to change your mind? Oh, my favorite part is the boobies episode. That's my favorite. <laughs> What? Boobies! Boobies! Yeah, joke sometimes is fun and it's fun, really fun. Here, hold this for me. Whoa, no, no, here, don't give me this. As of 2016, over 173 million people collectively have watched episodes of The Retarded Policeman. Wow. It's what started Josh's career and put him on the map. The problem was that not everyone thought the retarded policeman was funny. You ready? Yep. So we get a lot of the same questions over and over again. A lot mm -hmm. of the same comments. Yep. Um, so you want to start out with number one? We got three questions here. Sure, three questions. All right. Number one, is he really retarded? Hmm. Yes, he is. I don't know how this is an issue. How, how do people not realize that you actually do have Down syndrome? Cause but, because they, why? Because they are, are stupid. They're re what? Re-stupid? What were we going mean, to say? What does the word retard mean to you? Well, it is offensive sometimes what people are, are like sometimes. Me and my brother, uh, we did a, a video a while back, what retard is, yeah. And the National Down Syndrome Society is really upset about the use of the word retard. Retard! Well, we got news for you. The word retard doesn't mean what it used to mean. Words change. People change. The thing is, some people assume certain things about Josh, like how he feels about the word retarded, without knowing his story. Does the word bother you? Oh no, it doesn't bother me much, but no. Yeah, I mean... It, you, it doesn't bother me at all, no. There was one incident where he was at school and some kids, I guess, had called you retarded or something like that at school? Yeah, I remember that. And he came home and 
told my mom, he's like, Mom, some kids call me retarded today. I'm retarded, Mom. I'm retarded. My mom was really upset by that. And then Ponce went, well, what's retarded? <laughs> you know that these people are being assholes. And it doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter the words they use. They're being assholes because what, for whatever reason they, they didn't like it. Happens to be, oh yeah, he has Down syndrome. Let's attack that. Everybody has some emotions attached to the word retarded, and those emotions are colored by their own experiences or lack thereof with it. The way that Scott and Josh deal with the word retarded and its connotations is unique. They openly use it, mock it, make a parody of it. In fact, that's exactly what Josh did when his dad gave him the Ponce nickname. It's something that someone might take as an insult, but Josh embraced it. In the same way, Scott and Josh take the sting out of the word retarded and it's not offensive to them. Unfortunately, not everybody sees it that way. This is an issue that they constantly deal with, even on Josh's birthday, for example. Tobias hooked you up. Stop it. Stop what? What is he supposed to say? Stop what? Is this your brother? For real? Yes. Why would he lie about being my brother? I'm upset that, like... He's my brother! What the f is your f***ing deal with my f***ing brother? I'll walk away. It's cool. It's cool. It's not... I mentor but, no, no, no. people with Down syndrome. So That's I great. Just know. Have you That's seen Retarded all... Policeman? Retarded? Are you Have calling you it that? Are you calling it retarded? No, it's Down syndrome. F*** you. This is amazing. You. So this is the problem. This is the problem with it's our, our world. It's amazing. A guy walking away from a word. A guy who's scared of a word. That doesn't mean what it meant 10 years ago. It doesn't mean what it meant five years ago. It doesn't mean what it meant 20 years ago. Things evolve, people evolve, cultures evolve. Now it's one thing to have someone react this way in person, but like anything, when it's on the internet, it's magnified. When people can post anything on a video anonymously, that's when the real vitriol comes to the surface. 90% of the comments were all, this is the funniest thing we've ever seen. It's amazing, it's awesome, it's all positive. But 10% were like, this is horrible, this is terrible. How would you take advantage of this person? He doesn't know what he's doing, he doesn't know what he's doing. How do you think he doesn't know what he's doing? It's comedy, those jokes wouldn't be funny if he didn't know what the joke was. He couldn't tell the joke and make you laugh if he didn't get the joke. How dare you let him act, is basically what they were saying, because of his disability. They, and they wouldn't get how offensive that was. What? My mommy's at Sundance? After the retarded policeman, Josh had some opportunities to work in film and television. His first film was a dramatic role, an award-winning short film called Wunderkammer, that actually premiered at Sundance. I think one of Ponce's strongest qualities as an actor is that he is down to do anything. How to describe this movie? I'll do my best. It involves an old lady living in a dilapidated house with a bunch of birds and her special needs son. There's very little dialogue. That was an interesting movie. We were excited about it because it was, you know, um, different. We do make kind of jokes about it that that's my mom and Josh, but... Uh, <laughs> It may be a bit off-putting to watch, but I don't think it's artsy for the sake of being artsy. There's an actual sad story here. At the end of the film, the mother washes her son in the bathtub. I'm actually really impressed by Josh in this scene because it perfectly spotlights one of his greatest strengths as an actor. The ability to simply be in a scene. Uh, anytime as an actor that I have a problem with a role is like when I just, for some reason, can't focus and I'm very aware that I'm on a set and I'm very aware that what I'm doing is fake. You know, like that's, that's a really hard thing to overcome if, it's, if, if you have a part that you can't wrap your head around, it's really hard to overcome that. It's hard for me to think of any time where Ponce hasn't been able to lock into, you know, to doing a role. He knows what he has to do, but he just goes out and he does it. He doesn't, he doesn't worry about it. He just does what he's supposed to do. 
And then he looks at you and he'll say, is that okay? Is that good? And that's it. So, I don't know if it's learned. I don't know, I think that's just him. He just has that, maybe he has that confidence inside or everything is gonna be okay, I don't know. Josh's first full-length feature film was a really bizarre independent film called American Cowslip. It has a ridiculous cast with some big-name actors. It's a dark comedy about a heroin addict and his neighbors living in a small town in California. Josh plays a neighbor who lives across the street. The bulk of his scenes were relegated to wide shots of him trying to solve a Rubik's Cube. His brother Scott also appears briefly in it. You don't quit. I fired you! Too late, I already quit. You can't quit! I fired you! The next film Josh acted in was an independent comedy, Pastor Shepherd. But you wouldn't know that from looking at the poster, which depicts a menacing Danny Trejo wielding a baseball bat. Josh's role in this film was actually unique. He played the main character's boss. It's fun to see him play a jerk, and Josh got a kick out of it. The next film Josh was in was the independent coming-of-age drama, Terry. It had a bigger budget and bigger actors, like John C. Riley. Josh played a student at the main character's school. I like this guy. I you like know, this you, guy. You know, he <laughs> like a midget, kind of. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. We, you know, the, the politically correct term is hop. One project Josh had a lot of fun with was doing some voiceover work in a sketch for an episode of Robot Chicken. Give me candy. I respect. Did you just ask for candy? One of Josh's biggest roles was in the first feature film produced by College Humor, Coffee Town. I could beat the living shit out of this guy. <laughs> yeah, sure you could. Mm -hmm. No, I think you could too. I think you could too. You honestly don't think I could beat up a... Uh... Say it. Say it. <laughs> Never mind. That's what I thought, retard. Hey, you're a retard! One project that Josh worked on which was bizarrely close to home in terms of the subject matter was an episode of the Showtime series, Shameless. Excuse me. Retard, you can't even say it. So, how do we talk about it? We all know your opinion on this, Jeremy, but right now I'm the one speaking. Brothers and sisters, words only have power if we give them power. We must take back the word. Retard. Make it ours. I don't want anybody calling my son that word ever. It's incredibly hurtful. Even if we did get rid of it, someone will just think of another way of saying it. Me tar, you tar, retard nation. 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 His roles in Coffee Town and Shameless definitely strayed further away from the Down Syndrome stereotype. They're both self-aware comedies, kind of on the fringe, and they're not afraid to talk about something that seems so taboo. He's kind of doing what he did with the retarded policeman, but a step further. Before, he was making fun of the stereotype by becoming that stereotype. With these roles, he's making fun of the stereotype by subverting it. Something that will never change, however, is that Josh is restricted to playing characters with Down Syndrome. Oh my God. And no matter what statement is being made or what the context of the role is, that's always going to be the part he plays. It's limiting, but it's not something that can really be helped. Oh. He's got Down Syndrome, asshole! The trick, I think, is to, within those limitations, find something fresh to do. Bitch. Which can be tough, even for the progressive film industry. American Horror Story has done some interesting things with Down Syndrome actress Jamie Brewer, as well as a host of other disabled actors, especially in the fourth season of the series, Freak Show. Otherwise, I'm hard pressed to find other examples of unique casting choices for disabled performers. I feel like sometimes a studio just says, eh, find someone that looks disabled, I don't care who it is. That certainly looks like what happened in Josh's biggest role to date, the sci-fi action film, Looper. Starring Bruce Willis and Bruce Willis's face copied and pasted onto Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Josh had no lines and was on actual film for a total of two seconds and seven frames. But that didn't seem to bother him. Me and my whole family saw Looper in a the theater and saw myself and I said, Green I said, It's me! Out loud when everybody heard it. When I said it, yes. I think he's done a lot of good supporting roles. Um, 
his bigger films, it's been stuff where he doesn't have any speaking roles, but I mean, it's it's always big for us. Now Josh does think about it a lot. Like if he doesn't audition, he'll say, well, I haven't heard from him. Well, I guess I didn't get that part. So it does kind of bother him sometimes if he doesn't get a part. I mean, he really does like to work. And that's the only thing bad about the film industry. It looks like they don't want to take a chance on a Down syndrome actor. People would see Ponce and assume that he doesn't know how to do anything because he has Down syndrome, because they've never dealt with anyone with Down syndrome. They've only seen Down syndrome people in movie and TVs as somebody who needs help, somebody who needs to be assisted in some way. It's people being limited to roles that only perpetuate ignorance. I've always told his, his agents, I'm like, if, if there's a part that you see where it's a six-year-old girl or uh, a blind guy, he's so good and he'll make your heart melt. You know, give him that role. Let him be the one who's like, you don't expect them to have the answer, but they have the answer. It's a cliche, but... Give it to Potts because you never see a Down syndrome guy get that. It's always a little kid or the blind guy who can see the future. I wish there were more auditions for him because he's, he's badass. What role would you want to play the most? I like Die Hard. I like to be in that. Or Pop Fiction. But I like Pop Fiction. I like to do that. Yeah, Pop, pop Fiction is my favorite. I'll do that. Yeah, what role would you like to play in Pulp Fiction? John Travolta's role. Sometimes Samuel Jackson, because he's cool. I like him better. I want the suit and stuff to be a good gangster. <laughs> While we were filming, Josh mentioned that he wanted to do a reenactment of a scene with me. I used to make these reenactments of scenes all the time on my old YouTube channel. We thought while we were there, why not do it? Okay, action. It is dangerous to have a race car in the f***ing red, all right? I could blow. Oh, oh, you ready to blow? Yeah, I'm ready to blow. Well, I'm a mushroom color, I'm a motherfucker. Mother Every time my fingers start spraying, I'm super fly TNT. I'm the good and the Navarone, in fact. What the f*** am I doing the back? You're the mother to be on Brady tail? We're f***ing searching. I'm watching these windows, and they're picking up the skull. Both of my older children, Scott and Stacy, I don't think there were any boundaries on what they thought Josh could do. As a matter of fact, they fussed at me all the time because they said, Josh can do this, Josh can do this. You just, you don't realize what Josh can do. And as a mother, you know, it's like, uh, he is my son, yes I do. But regardless, regardless, they always felt like I probably protected him too much. I think they did anyway. Josh gets sharp when he goes to, with Scott, because he has to, because Scott expects more from him. We don't expect as much when, when he's here. No, it's not 100%. People just aren't aware of the potential. And the weirdest thing is like, I've seen Ponce get smarter. You know, I've seen him go from brain dead to Einstein because of stimulation. One of the most frustrating things for me, and definitely for Ponce, is that he is smart enough to know that he's not smart enough. So when he can't figure out something, it's, it's because of the downs, you know? There's just certain things he can't get. And I see that frustrate him. So when you can take something that he can't get, and present it to him in a way that he gets it, it's a magical moment because he, all of a sudden, you know, he feels it. He's got this, this amazing energy, this win. He's just so excited. Josh's next role was in the short film, The Bridge. It's about four friends who meet at a bridge and then jump off the bridge. The best thing about this film was that it was written and directed by Josh. It's goofy, weird, self-aware. It's definitely Josh's sense of humor all the way. Suck these nuts. You wish. It's purely him. 
If you want to know anything about Josh, perhaps even more than we can tell you in this documentary, just watch The Bridge. It's 100% concentrated Josh the Ponce Man Perry. I mean, with Ponce, it's stimulation equals an amazing payoff. Amazing payoff for anybody who's around him, but definitely amazing payoff for him because he loves making people laugh. He loves being that life of the party guy. He absolutely loves it. He loves when he gets to do a dramatic part and make people cry. Like I watch him watch himself in things that he's done and cry watching himself and look around to make sure like, is everybody crying? Did I do a good job? Like he loves that, he likes to be touching. So what can we learn from Josh? It's hard to pin it down to just one thing. Kenny and I flew to Louisiana expecting to get one story, but were overwhelmed by how complex it became. One theme we kept coming back to was, don't let your limitations define you. Josh is doing what he loves, and that passion naturally rubs off on people. This was one of my favorite comments. One important thing I took away from meeting Josh was the struggle for a person to be comfortable in their own skin. That's something that I personally have trouble with, and I would say that most adults spend all their lives trying to be at peace with themselves, but never quite get there. The thing about Josh is that he doesn't think like that. It's a completely foreign thought process to him. He likes himself. He is comfortable in his own skin. I'm sure it helped that he was raised in an environment of love and support, but like his mother said, maybe it's not learned. That helps him not just as an actor, but as a person. It doesn't matter who you are, what you do, what limitations you have, or think you have. Josh's story is something that everyone should take to heart. So you'll do anything in a movie? Yes. And there's nothing you won't do? No. I just don't like farting in front of people, that's what I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. Not in public. No farting at all. That's what people don't like as much as farts. <laughs>